In this video, we will discuss about Epstein-Barr virus, EBV. Uh, DNA viruses, examel smallpox, herpes simplex virus, cytomegalovirus, Epstein-Barr virus, varicella zoster, hepatitis, and adenoviruses. Um, this herpes viridae, uh, which has been divided into three subfamily, herpes viruses uh, divided into three subfamilies, alpha, beta, and gamma. This alpha family, these alpha viruses, example, herpes simplex virus 1, herpes simplex virus 2, then Epstein-Barr virus. Beta have cytomegalovirus, comma have varicella zoster virus. Uh, in this video, we will discuss about uh, this Epstein-Barr virus. Morphology of Epstein-Barr virus, size uh, 100 to 200 nanometer, safe, irregular, then symmetry, isosahetal symmetry, and it has 162 capsomer, genome is double standard DNA, envelope also present, it have special structure, uh, such as um, tegument membrane is presented, this envelope having special structure name is called a tegument membrane, then what is the features of Epstein-Barr virus? What is Epstein-Barr virus? It will show that virus named after the discoverer, Epstein and Barr, who is isolated it from Burgitt's lampoma. So, name after scientist only, that virus have that name, Epstein-Barr. This one isolated from Burgitt's lymphoma. This Epstein-Barr virus will specifically attack B lymphocytes. It uh, attack to B lymphocytes. It have specific receptor. Specific receptor attached surface of B cells or B lymphocytes. The name of the receptor CD21 molecules. With the help of this CD21 receptor, Epstein-Barr virus will integrate itself to the cells integrate into b lymphocytes so resulting in generation of b lymphocyte cancer the b lymphocytes cancer is called as burgitt's lymphoma where we can see heavy inflammation of lymph nodes the lymphatic the lymphocytes get cancer condition and the patient will uh, have very predominant inflammations uh, over the lymph nodes and this particular condition name is called as Burgitt's lymphoma. Next clinical manifestation Epstein-Barr virus uh, is ubiquitous in all human population but 80 to 90 percentage of Children's acquired Epstein Barr infection uh, by the age of three years. Once infected, this virus is present in the individual for lives. Once infected means this virus is present in the individual for life. Next sources. Uh, Sources of infection is usually saliva of infected person. Main mode of transmission is kissing. The virus is not highly contagious. Tablet aerosol are not efficient in transmitting infection. Main mode through kissing. So, sources saliva of infected person. Epstein-Barr virus has oncogenic properties and causes Burgitt's lymphoma and nasopharyngeal carcinoma, cancer in nasopharyngeal mouth. 
this virus have three main clinical manifestation one is infectious mononucleosis it also called as glandular fever it is a disease to b cells actually the uh, we can see enlarged nucleus here we can see enlarged nucleus within the cytoplasm of the cell second one is infection in immunocompromised host it is most common opportunistic viral infection that is seen in the patient for aids third one is epstein barr virus associated malignancy Burkitt's lymphoma and nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Uh, these are the overall clinical manifestation seen by Epstein-Barr virus. Clinically, the disease is called Kissing syndrome. Infectious mononucleosis or uh, glandular fever. In case of infectious mononucleosis we can able to see tonsillar exudates that means if we open that mouth of infected patient by epstein barr virus inside the mouth we can see tonsils with a puzzle exudates discharging or pus discharging can be seen inside that mouth of that person who are infected by epstein barr virus and the virus transmitted to the kissing that's why also called kissing disease the disease usually lasts for two to three weeks the patient recovery not deadly but it may causes cancer b cell lymphoma Whenever Epstein Barr virus activate the B lymphocytes and it leads to secretion of IgM antibodies due to attacking the B cells, the B cell will undergo cancer. So first we discussed the infectious mononucleosis. It can cause cancer, the mode of transmission through kissing. So it have that name kissing disease. Whenever Epstein-Barr virus activates B lymphocytes uh, and it leads to secretion of IgM antibodies. Uh, so, due to attacking the B cell, B cells undergo cancer condition. Uh, due to that, that abnormal proliferation of B cells. So, there will be abnormal proliferation of uh, B cells. The count of B cells will increase. Say for example, there are 100 means it will producing 1000. So, abnormal production of IgM antibodies also can occur. So, B cell subnormal production can undergo cancer. Next, pathogenesis. How does it attack B cells? This Epstein Barr virus, how it will attack to B cells? main mode of transmission kissing the virus will enter the pharyngeal epithelial cells through mouth only then it will bind with the, that receptor cd21 receptor virus enter through mouth only it will enter after that it will reach to a pharyngeal epithelial cell then it will bind with the cd21 receptor it multiply locally then enter into bloodstream and infect B lymphocytes. Here Burgitt's lymphoma started. Burgitt's lymphoma start from here. In most cases this virus remain latent inside the lymphocytes. That means it won't show immediate symptoms. Uh, in the patient but it become transformed 
so through kissing through mouth it will enter reach to pharyngeal epithelial cell then it bind with the cd21 receptor then multiply locally then enter to blood stream then infected b lymphocytes then it started burkitt's lymphoma many patient this one is transformed the uh, transformed occur these transformed or immortalized cells are capable of indefined growth in vitro so they are polyclonally activated and produced many type of immunoglobulin which the virus reactivate the b cells become cancer so abnormal increased b cell proliferation the count b cell become increase that the b cells was a cancer parallelly the b cells also release progeny virus so resulting in death of b cells and released progeny variants what is progeny variants which are baby virus so that's that is how this virus causes pathogenesis b cells infected with the epstein barr virus resulting abnormal proliferation of b cells it will release many progeny virus parallelly secreted igm antibody at that same time these virus will release the new antigen name is called as neo antigen a neo antigen will trigger the t lymphocytes so the t lymphocytes will trigger new antigen and t lymphocytes will try to attack virus during this war virus and t lymphocytes the virus will causes little damage to that t lymphocytes resulting in formation of vacuolation of nucleus uh, b lymphocytes nucleus become vacuolated that one is here that nucleus inside the center part like i here cell center part lies this particular cell infected t lymphocytes okay the t lymphocytes are seen in atypical lymphocytes in blood stream blood smear of infectious mononucleosis patient so blood smear we can see this center part lies the nucleus so summary of pathogenesis of that uh, epstein barr virus mononucleosis means vacuoles within the nucleus of t lymphocytes that's why called mononucleosis so parallelly it causing bucket lymphoma by attacking b cells and also causing mononucleosis in t cells and also causing cancer in nasopharyngeal region so see how much destruction this virus causes in human body and this virus latent causes b cell viruses so this virus causing hyper pandemic in hyper pandemic in africa mononucleosis then t cells cancer nasopharyngeal region these are about pathogenesis next a laboratory diagnosis of epstein barr virus we taken nasopharyngeal swab or blood smear we can see wbc blood smear wbc with the mononucleus and vacuolation in the center of that cell then a very specific serological test to detect this epstein barr virus name is called pal panel test 
in this test first take serum of the patient and heat heat it and inactivated the serum 56 degree for 30 minute after half an hour it will diluted that means doubling so we will mix it with equal volume of one percentage of sheep erythrocyte suspensions These tubes are incubated 37 degrees Celsius for 4 hours and examined for agglutination. A titer of 100 or above is uh, suggestive for infectious mononucleosis. 100 or more indicate that patient was affected from uh, this Epstein Barr virus. Then there is no specific uh, treatment for Epstein Barr virus. Few antiviral drugs available for herpes virus, not to Epstein Barr virus. So, here a patient having IgM antibody, high amount of IgM antibody presented. See the statement form. There is no specific treatment for Epstein Barr virus. Thanks for watching.